What can a person buy nowadays with $10 in his pocket? If you go to McDonald's in New York, you can get two Big Macs. If you visit Starbucks, you will get espresso and something from the bakery. What about pizza? For $10, bucks, you can eat a half of large pizza at Domino's or get two hot dogs from a hot dog stand in Manhattan. What about groceries? You can get some beer or Pepsi or Oreo or Lay's or cherries or watermelon or toilet paper. What can you rent for $10 a month? A subscription for music, TV, movies, gaming, storage, and so on. But for the same $10, you can buy a pleasant trip down memory lane. Thanks to an 8-bit handheld game console. What you see right now is a console that I paid $10 for, including the shipping from China. I was wondering, what is the minimum price for something that I can play on? In a world full of awesome hardware and software advancements, a world with huge resolution smartphone screens, cameras with gazillion megapixels, ultra-fast CPUs and GPUs, I was looking for the opposite. What is the minimum price I can get a working game console for? This is a cheap Nintendo Famicom slash NES clone in a form factor like a Game Boy. I bought it from AliExpress, but I guess it can be found in other places too. With different colors and slight design changes, it has a 2.4 inch color screen with awful viewing angles, especially when viewed from the right. It's better with a rotated screen, but for this price there is nothing more to expect. The console has a D-pad, reset, start, select and few other buttons. The buttons are little, but for a child I think they are completely fine. The body is plastic and light. A tiny speaker is located in the right corner. With a volume knob you can increase and decrease the volume, but the brightness of the screen cannot be adjusted. The console comes with a 1020mAh 3.7V battery. The origin of the battery is from old Nokia phones, but nowadays it's used in various gadgets. The price in AliExpress is around $2-$3 without the shipping. It is a rechargeable battery and can be charged with the included micro USB cable. The other cables in the package are for TV out, but my 4K OLED doesn't support this type of connectivity. According to the console, 500 games are available. Of course this is not true. There are many of them more than once. Or is it a variation of a game with a cheat code? For example, you can start a Contra game with better weapon or from a specific level. But still, there are really a lot of games, and I think that they will be enough for everybody. Anyway, most people play a few favorite games, and that's it. Speaking of games, let me share some favorites from my childhood. Contra is a classic video game series known for its intense action and side-scrolling shoot-em-up gameplay. It was developed and published by Konami, a Japanese video game company. The first game in the series, simply titled Contra, was released in arcades in 1987 and it gained popularity due to its challenging difficulty, cooperative gameplay and memorable music. Due to the success of the original game, Contra spawned numerous sequels and spin-offs across various gaming platforms. Some of them can be found in the console, although for example, Super Contra doesn't run very smoothly. Chippendale Rescue Rangers is a popular video game based on the animated television series of the same name. The game was developed and published by Capcom and it was released for the Nintendo Entertainment System in 1990. The series and game feature two of Disney's iconic chipmunk characters, Chip and Dale, along with their friends who form a detective agency to solve various cases and help those in need. This is probably the game that I found most interesting back in the days, in terms of variety of different levels and opponents.
Snow Bros is the game I've played the most with another person. My sister and I have spent countless hours together and have been mesmerized by the gameplay, cute graphics, and cooperative multiplayer mode. In Snow Bros, players control two snowmen characters named Nick and Tom. The objective is to rescue the princesses who have been captured by an evil snow wizard. To do this, Nick and Tom must navigate through a series of single-screen platforming levels, defeating enemies by turning them into snowballs and rolling them to eliminate other enemies. The gameplay mechanics are simple, but engaging. Nick and Tom can create snowballs by engulfing enemies with their icy breath and then roll these snowballs across the screen, eliminating anything in their path. Players must be strategic in their movements and snowball rolling to clear each level while avoiding or defeating various enemy types that become progressively more challenging as the game advances. Only one person can play on this handheld console, so in this case the game is not very attractive. The same situation is with the tanks. You can play it solo, but it's more fun with someone else. A game without fancy design, but addictive. Of course, classic like Super Mario is also available. And in different versions like Super Mario Bros. 3 and Dr. Mario, for example. There are also some strange games with a very strange looking Mario character. I don't know what the story is in these versions, but I just won't play them. Is this console worth it? For $10, yes. Even if someone buys it and doesn't like it, you can always give it to a kid for an example. I won't use it daily, but will still use it on rare occasions, when I want a break from everything, and to relax with some simpler games, without long loading times, finding multiplayer lobbies, loot boxes, season passes, bugs, big GPUs with high power consumption, heat generation and so on and so on. It's just 10 bucks.